everyone. This is a video tutorial on a suggested outline for your theme analysis paper. And I have created a modeled example for The Great Gatsby because I can't get over it. But also mainly because it's a book that we've all read together and we're familiar with so you can follow along with what I'm writing about. Um, okay, so in your introduction, the only thing you really need to have at this point is your thesis statement. And your thesis statement needs to be about what the theme is in your work and then how the author is developing it. So my theme statement here is Fitzgerald develops the theme that it is a hopeless yet romantic dream to try to repeat the past in his novel, The Great Gatsby. So that's my theme statement. My topic here was like repeating the past but then I had to also create a theme statement with that topic about what the author is trying to argue about that theme. Um, and then I'm going to add to that thesis statement to just explain how he developed that. And I put he develops this theme through symbols, plot structure, and character development. And I kind of came back to that after I wrote, uh, outlined my paper when I had a better idea of, of what I wanted to do with that. You're really going to be dependent on what your research says about the theme of the work. So do your research first and then come up with your theme statement because you might find that your research doesn't really focus on the theme you want to write about. Okay, then you are writing uh, some background about the novel or play that you're writing about. And this needs to be pretty brief. Mine's probably going to end up needing to be cut when I actually write my paper, but I wanted to include this. I also included like longer quotations that I'm actually going to use if I just wanted to summarize what an author was saying, but I didn't feel like doing it tonight. So I just copied and pasted it all so I knew to come back to it. Um, so I'm giving some context about the 1920s specifically, um, and this comes from my research that I did. Um, and this was a quote that came from one of the journal articles I had, um, but then I also am including a quote from a speech by Warren Harding when he ran for president. I'm sorry. Okay, um, and then I had stuff on The Lost Generation, and then I had stuff about the reception of the book, like how it was received when it first came out, and The Great Gatsby was not really well liked when it first came out, which is kind of interesting. Um, and so I included some quotations from some of the earlier reviews of the work. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to need to cut this when I get to the actual paper, but you know me, I always like to have more material than I can get through because it's easier to cut than to add. Okay, um, so that's the background. Your background is going to look different depending on what you're actually doing and working with. Okay, next you're going to include a brief plot summary. Um, and I just used the parts of the plot. We know the plot right now. You don't need all the details. This is not the bulk of your paper. Okay, then you're getting to theme analysis, and this is where we're using rhetorical verbs to talk about what the author's doing. We're using literary devices to talk about how the author's using those literary devices to build a theme. And we're also using our research to support the claims that we're making. And we need to have quotes from the book, and we also need to have quotes from our research. So these are the claims that are going to develop into paragraphs. And again, I think in some of this I have too much material. I'm going to need to cut it. But I just wanted to kind of go through and copy and paste. And I wish you had seen this before I worked on it. So what I actually did is I, I knew, I kind of skimmed over my sources and got an idea of what theme I could talk about, but I didn't really read the sources carefully, but I kind of got an idea that I could talk about the past. Then what I did is I started reading my sources and when I came to like really helpful quotes about the past and history in the book, I just started copying and pasting the quotes and putting them in here in one long, long list. Like I had like 15 quotes. And then I started like just reorganizing what order they were in to pull together similar ideas. And then those similar ideas became claims for me. I hope that makes sense. And if it hadn't taken so long, <laughs> I might have done it live with you. But basically, I didn't have any claims. And basically what I'm doing is skipping a step instead of doing note cards. I'm just putting all my research together in bullet points, okay? 
and then I'm moving them around to the ideas that are most similar with each other, and then I'm coming up with claims that relate to them. Okay, so just to give a, an example, on this first one, authors kept talking about history and how history is important in the book. So I put together all of my quotes from my research about history and put them all together, and then I came up with a claim. And your claims really should be discussing what an author's doing with the text. So here, Fitzgerald uses the concept of history in the novel to emphasize the contradictory way in which our history shapes us. Okay, and again, this relates back to my theme statement. I'm talking about how the author is developing his theme here. Okay, and then I put quotes from my research here, and I'm keeping track of the page that it comes from and the author's last name, because then when I'm actually writing my paper, my paper is going to be so easy to write because I'm basically just putting all of this together. My citations are even there already. Although I have to admit, I, I need to go back and get the actual page numbers from my paper copy of The Great Gatsby, so I'm kind of failing there. And I'm also obviously very tired. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, okay. So I need to add some page numbers for my Great Gatsby book, but all my other research, I just put my page numbers in the author's last name, so I'd have that all together. Okay, so my next claim is that Fitzgerald frequently returns to the idea that time has a beginning, middle, and end through the book. Thus, it's not repeated, like it goes in a linear fashion. So again, I included some summary from the book, but I also included quotations from my research, okay? And like, this is just an example from the Steinbrink. Moments of happiness or triumph from the past can neither be recaptured nor repeated, and for that reason, seldom can they be forgotten. Um, so this was a quote in an article about The Great Gatsby that I thought really supported this idea well. So you're using your research to show that other people have these great ideas that you have too, or supporting your ideas. Okay, again, I have some quotations from the book as well to go along with that. Um, and if you all want a PDF copy of The Kite Runner so you can do a word search, you can look that up online um, and then you can find where it's at, at least the chapter, and then you can go back in your book and find it quick, more quickly. I wouldn't cite the actual PDF because I think the main PDF that's out there isn't really copyrighted and doesn't have an author and publisher and stuff, so use your paper book for that, but at least you can get down to like where the... Um, chapter number is. Okay, my next claim. The narrative structure and use of language by Fitzgerald operates to further this focus on the impossibility of repeating the past. So now here I'm talking about how he uses the devices of structure and language, and I actually have some quotations about how he uses polysyndeton and ascendeton. He thought those were long gone, but there they are. Um, and again, I have quotations from my sources about this. My next claim is that the symbols in the book also shift in meaning throughout the book, a point Fitzgerald develops in order to show the impossibility of repeating the past, um, that things change over time. Um, and I use some um, quotes from my sources as well. I probably need to add a little bit more um, from the original novel as well. And then I'm not figuring out my conclusion as well, uh, yet that's just there as a reminder to me when I write my paper. Um, I also, as I was doing my research and stuff, just put together my Works Cited page because um, I don't want to look that stuff up twice, so um, I just did it as I was going, and that way I can just copy and paste it when it comes time to write my book. My, not my book. You're not writing your paper. paper. Um, but really, your paper should be pretty easy after doing this because you're like copying and pasting stuff over and putting ideas together. The only thing you're really adding is your analysis. Um, and mine is probably a lot longer than it needs to be. I'm going to have to shorten it um, and find ways to, to focus it a little bit more and take out some of my sources probably. But again, I'd rather have more to work with and then find out it doesn't work um, than to have not enough and have to start putting stuff in there. Okay, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, if you I'm going to post this modeled example as well um, so you have that. Um, that you can look at my modeled example. If you have further questions, just email me. Um, and if you also want me to take a look at your outline, um, I can do that. I usually, I'm having trouble finding time during my day because of my kids to 
help like during the day. Um, but I should definitely next week have a lot more time in the evening. And to those of you who have emailed me, um, I'm hoping to get to look at your stuff tomorrow. Um, so anyways, I hope that's helpful and keep asking questions if you have them. Thanks everyone.